Hey, new life, and welcome to the Daily Devotional. My name is Tex, and I'm so excited you decided to join us today. Man, we got some great stuff in store, but if it's your first time joining us, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hit the pause or stop button right now. And I, I know that seems counterintuitive, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop and go back to the beginning of this first Peter series and, and jump along with us. There's no exact like, hey, you got to do this on April 29th. You got to do this day. No, like go back from the beginning and every day follow along with us. Because let me tell you, we have some great leaders that have been pouring out God's word and wisdom throughout this. Our staff and our team leaders, man, God has been just teaching us some great stuff. I know I've enjoyed learning so much throughout it. In fact, those of you who've been following along with this series, here's what I want you to do. In the comments below, whatever it is that you're following us on, comment how it is God's been teaching you. What is one thing he's been pushing and challenging you to grow in during this quarantine? Maybe there's some great thing you've been learning. You've been working on your family. You've been working on your health or you've been being able to just grow in your time with him. What is that one thing God's been teaching you during this time? I'd love to hear that as we move forward. But without any further ado, grab your Bible, grab your Bible app, whatever it is that works best for you. We're going to dive in today. Check it out. So we're in 1 Peter chapter 2, um, verses 18 through 23, and here's what it says. It says, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good ones, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure but if you do good and you suffer for it and you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. You see, he committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but check it out, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Gosh, I love this passage. And, and I want to start by, by diving into a couple of things that I find interesting here. The first thing is the first word he says. He says servants. And for many of us, that word might create some tension or some uneasiness. But I want to remind us who it is that Paul's talking to. Or excuse me, that Peter is talking to. And so when we look at Peter here and he's talking to these people who have been dispersed from the, their lands, who have been going through persecution, who have been pushed out from where they wanted to be, from their homes and from what they're used to. They're under severe persecution. And yet he does this moment in which he reminds many of them of who they are. He reminds servants. He says, servants, honor and respect your masters. And, and let me tell you, that's hard. For many of us, we've, we've experienced in which there's people who have authority over us, who have power over us in some way, shape, or form, who have abused it, who have misused that, have treated you poorly, and that's left some bad taste in your mouth. I know I've had incredible moments in which people who, who should have been there for me, who had my back, and yet didn't, and felt so betrayed and lost in that. And yet Jesus reminds us, he says, hey, don't just honor the good leaders in your life. Don't just honor your masters that are good. Honor even the unjust. And so I want to just challenge us today. While we're not necessarily servants or slaves in the same context they had in, the, in this time period, here's what I want each of us to know, that each of us have people in authority over us today. Whether you're a student or a child and you got family members that are over you, you got parents, right? And they make rules. They have authority over you and I. Um, or maybe you're, you're, in a, you're in a family and you got to deal with like those kind of different dynamics of what does it look like to lead your family well, but you still have to co-lead um, with another parent in those situations. Um, maybe you have, remember, you, many of us have a boss as well. And while we're not a servant, in some ways, we have someone who is an authority over us that God is calling us to honor and respect, even if they're not the best boss. And what a time is this, because we're in this unprecedented time in which we're seeing some difficult situations. We understand that, man, let me tell you, for families, I know it's hard trying to work from home and also get work done while in the midst of having kids that are fighting with each other, that are wanting to have lunch, that are trying to get out of the house, trying to learn something and needing help. And yet your boss is also trying to ask you, can you produce? 
And so that's really difficult. That's a challenge. How are you able to sit in that? And even when they are unjust, they're being unreasonable, God's saying, how can we honor them? Notice he doesn't say you have to completely agree. He's not saying be a doormat. He's not saying completely fall ahead be like, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like he's not just saying be a yes man either. He's saying, but how do you honor and do you respect them? In all these situations, here's my challenge for each of us today. He says to look to Jesus. And you see, when we look at the fact that Jesus, who in his very nature was God himself in the flesh, Jesus who had all power and authority, Jesus, whom all things, Colossians tells us that all things were created for, by him and through him and for him. Let me tell you, it still goes on to say that that Jesus submits to the Father, that he submits to him, not just in his will, but even to the point of going to a cross, even to the point of being arrested, even to the point that he is beaten beyond recognition, even is willing to submit to the authority over him, even though it would cause him great pain and suffering. And in the, even in the garden, he says, Father, let your will be done, not mine. And so I want to challenge you and I today, when we look at what Jesus did, even though he was beaten, he didn't respond with hate. He didn't fight back. He, in fact, brings this huge example in the midst of it, that he knows one thing above else. He knows that he is submitting to the one who judges justly. I love that. It says that he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. And I want to encourage you that you and I, we have an authority that is above all of them. We have this Father in heaven. We have God himself who is above our bosses, who is above our governors, who is above our presidents, who is above every authority figure in our lives. And guess what? They have to respond to him. And our job in the midst of this, how do we respond to what God has entrusted you and I? How do we love, honor, and respect those in authority and in positions over us today? So as we look at today and we look at these challenges that we face, the question is, is how can we do good? How can we continue to love and honor and respect the people around us, even in the midst of these challenging things? How do we love and respect those bosses that might be just really putting a lot of pressure, that might not be understanding, who don't have kids at home, people who are willing to be fighting? How do you respect your parents' kids, even though they might be having some tough stuff? They might have been a little meaner than they normally are. Whatever the case is, how do we learn to still love, to still honor, and still respect them, even in the midst of some tough situations. Because here's the beauty. When we look at what Jesus did, it changed everything. Jesus being willing to submit to the authorities what changed all of history, guys. And I believe that as we love and as we are willing to suffer for the grace of God, we show others what does it mean to follow Jesus, even into suffering. We put on the faith and the whole armor of God in the midst of these tough situations. And here's what, you putting that example on might be exactly what changes everything for somebody else. You being willing to follow Jesus into the midst of all that's going, I believe is going to change somebody's life. It might change your kids' lives. It might change your employer's life. Who knows who is watching that's going to see that their life can be changed forever because you're willing to still honor and respect them, even when they didn't deserve it, even when all things were wrong, even when things were at their hardest in the midst of quarantine, you said, I'm going to love and honor just like Jesus was willing to. Guys, we love you. We miss you. And if we just, if you like this, you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and you hit share. Have a wonderful day. We love and miss you guys.